Hello everyone, Michelle here from The Creative Cove and thanks for joining me today. I wanted to play with these botanical papers. Uh, they're kind of like a faux botanical style paper. Um, I got the idea, the original idea off a channel called C Cibo. So it's S-E-E-C-I-B-O and she does a version of this um, with, I believe, um, napkins and Mod Podge, the watered down Mod Podge. And uh, so go over and check her out. She does some really beautiful stuff. And so I thought I'd, uh, I got her permission, of course, and decided to uh, try it myself, but I'm using some different materials. So the concept I got from her channel, and then I'm kind of putting my own spin on it. And for some of that reason is because I am moving, and so I have packed a few of my materials, which is really unfortunate because uh, I've, it, I've packed my glues. So I've kept my main glue out, but my Mod Podge and all my other glues I've packed and put away in storage. So I'm so frustrated right now. I don't know what to pack and what not to pack. Um, so I'm moving. So the thing is we're, we're selling the house. Well, we sold the house and we moved next month, but my husband and I are moving into a trailer while our house is being built. So the trailer is not gonna have a lot of space. I'm not gonna have a studio, which is gonna be real difficult for me. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions on what to keep and take with me, like Mod Podge, <laughs> let me know because I'm really struggling. It's like it's like telling an artist, oh, you know, you can create whatever you want, but you get one brush and one piece of paper and maybe one color. So it's really difficult to take all your materials and whittle it down to like one box. So I'm really struggling with that. So anyways, off on a tangent. Um, so because of that, uh, all I had left was a tiny bit of um, flexible molding paste, and I do mean a tiny bit. So I added water to it, and uh, I figured it should act as an adhesive because you can stick it on canvas. I've used it on canvas, and it sticks. So I'd imagine there's some sort of adhesive in it, and I, I was right because I did do a few of these before I filmed and uh, I'll show you those in a second, but it does glue. So what is nice about it, however, is it's flexible. So your paper stays flexible. Now I would imagine Mod Podge would also stay flexible, but if you don't add a lot of water to this, you can have an opaque white background throughout your paper, which is also another idea you can uh, play with. So I only had a little bit left, so I had to water mine down. So mine are not opaque. They're still say, they still say rel stay relatively translucent. Um, transparent, I should say. So I also wanted to, I like the vintage kind of grungier look in my paper. So in the process, I also added this vintage photo distressed ink spray. Um, it's very hard to control when you're spraying. I like to have a little bit more control on it because it can be quite potent. So I spray some in the top of my uh, molding paste cap and then I can use a brush and dilute it. So I'll, I'll show you how I do that as well. And uh, so here's some results. We'll go through this really quickly. So here's a full page and this is dry now. So you can see it is very flexible and uh, it's quite pretty. Like I really love the fact that you can see these flowers through it but you can't see tons of detail. Now, if you were to use a, a glue or a spray varnish of some kind to adhere these, these would probably show up a little bit more. Um, that's the one thing I found with the molding paste is I can't go heavy on it, otherwise um, the white will stay over top of the flower and I won't see it. But this really has a quite a beautiful vintage feel to it. And so I did a, a couple of them. I just uh, cut them up and folded them. So I'll go through them really quick. So this one, this first one has um, hydrangea in it. Is it hydrangea? Yeah, pressed hydrangea. Uh, and it's the same process that I'm gonna show you. And then I just used a stamp and kind of sprayed it and diluted the stamp a little bit. Uh, this one is the other piece of the hydrangea. And again, just using one of my stamps. And I've shown you how to actually carve these stamps in uh, a video. So if you're interested in that, I'll try and remember to link it. Uh, here is one with, um, what are these called? Geraniums. So this turned out kind of neat because the colors bleed while they're wet. So this went in bright pink and is now turned to purple. 
So you never know what you're gonna get. You're gonna experiment with all kinds of different ones, which is really fun. Um, here's more baby's breath. So there's the baby's breath, which I just decorated some pages. So here's a stamp and a label and another label with drawing on it because that's what I like to add. And there's the rest of the hydrangea and some more baby's breath. So I thought we could, I could show you how I did it. And again, check out uh, Cisa Bo's channel because she has a version as well that she does. And it's very pretty as well. All right, so what I'm going to use is a piece of, uh, what's this called, acetate. And just whatever you can, that's kind of waterproof to protect your surface. And then out of necessity, again, I packed my napkins. So I have a little bit of tissue paper left over from packing. So I'm gonna use that. And um, Again, it will probably have a different result if you use a, a napkin or if you use paper towel or whatever it is you have handy to use. So. I'm going to put a coat of this on and I'm just going to paint it on and then we'll find some pressed flowers and what's neat is you don't have to use pressed flowers if you if you don't have any handy you can use um, anything you can use little ripped up other bits of tissue you can just spray it you can do whatever you want uh, so I thought I have some of these ferns out I would try some ferns I love ferns and I think I'll do a full one here. I have a video as well on how I press my flowers and how I store them so that I can use them when I need them for a project like this. And you can think of the orientation in which you're going to use this paper. So if you're gonna fold this paper right in half, then you might not wanna put this guy here, but he also will remain flexible so you can. That's, the, that's kind of what makes this project fun. And I've got a little bits in here. I'm just going to, oh, here's some, uh, let's use some buttercups too. So I don't have a editing software, so we're not going to be able to see this paper completely dry. But I, I just wanted to show you how I do it and what materials I've been using. And again, you can use whatever resources you have. So if you have a varnish, Use the varnish, because the varnish should, anything that has a, a natural, uh, well, not natural, but anything that has an adhesive will work. So, in this case, molding paste. All right, I'm just gonna add another one of these, because these are really pretty. And these press so beautifully in the garden, these little buttercups. All right that there and maybe break a few of these off. Tweezers come in really, really handy when working with pressed flowers, by the way. So I keep a pair very close to my pressed flower stash. Okay, I'll move that out of the way. So that's that's the um, the basics of putting the flowers wherever you want and you can, you can design things, you can use up whatever you have. So I like to add just a little dab of this so that it does glue to the page on top because if I just put the page on top now, I find there's no glue on these flowers and it creates more air pockets. So I just dab a little. And this is why I like it watered down because if I used a solid molding paste, I wouldn't get to see these pretty colors. So I'm really just adding a little bit. And then I'm gonna take another piece of tissue paper and stick it right on top and smooth it out gently. So you can see some of the colors coming through. You can see a little bit, and as it dries, you'll see even more. So I'm just going to spray some of this in here. And I've got a cup with uh, water and a very soft brush. And now I'm just going to paint the paper with this really pretty rustic vintage photo spray and you can make it and you can see if you spray it I find it's very hard to control it's it's overkill for me so I like to that's why I like to try and mix it in my little container here so I can control the amount of darkness I add to my paper this will dry a little bit lighter too I've noticed it uh 
it doesn't stay quite as dark as it looks when it's wet. And that's it. So then you just kind of let that dry or take a dryer to it. And you'll see the, the back will have, it's very saturated because it goes right through. But you can see it as it dries, you're gonna get more of a, um, a translucent look. So here's one I did a little bit earlier, but it's not 100% dry yet. Um, but you can see that the colors are starting to come through a little bit more than, than um, when you first do it. So let's go back to this. So I thought we'd just cut this guy up and I can show you how simple it is to cut up. So in my case, I'm just gonna cut them in half. Uh, you can rip these edges. And you can play with it some more. So why don't we do that actually? Let's just, let's just dabble. So if you wanna really intensify the ends, you can uh, add a little bit more. I'm just gonna control the amount of water I have in this brush. I don't want it soaked. And you can really intensify the edges of the paper because it will absorb differently now that it's, this glue has dried. So you can get, you can make some pretty dramatic pieces. And then again, you can control that by removing some with, let's say another piece of tissue paper. So don't have really any paper towel handy or fabric, do I have any fabric? No. So you can just dab it off. And if you don't like the, the way the line has kind of dried like a watercolor, I personally do, but you can, Soften it again by adding a little bit more water. And you can just keep playing. You can add stamps to this. Um, so here's the one I haven't touched. So you can see the dramatic difference you can make by adding more. And you can use anything, paint, whatever you want. Um, so uh, my book is gonna be orientated this way. And I don't really want to cover that up because it's quite pretty. I am going to tear this edge a little bit. And I think I'll add just a touch of the distressed oxide on the edge here. Make it a little stronger. Just to really pop the edges of these papers. So obviously it needs to dry. But sometimes it's nice to stamp while it's wet because um, it can bleed, it makes the stamp bleed. So I haven't done this. Normally I add the water after, but let's try it before. Maybe even intensify that a little more. Let's try it while it's wet and see what it does. So I have, um, I have this one, we'll use this guy. So this is a lino cut that I did. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun playing with that. I should have another video coming up on a butterfly soon. It's a relatively inexpensive hobby too. I'm just gonna put that down and I'm gonna press. Oh, sorry, and the ink I just used was, let's see if I can open it. Yeah. There's a trick to these things. Oh, I just broke it, I guess. <laughs> Is um, close to my heart, Coca, exclusive inks. Let's see if I can put that back in, there we go. And I like these little ink pads because they rotate and they drop into each other. So you're just gonna remember which end to open. <laughs> so there you go, it's, it's run a little bit and adds a little bit more interest um, to the page. And then this will dry again. I'll have a kind of a watermarked look, which I, I really happen to like. And again, it's entirely up to your taste. But it's a great way to use up um, some different materials and again, Taking this idea and making it your own and using up different materials will always get you different results, which is a lot of fun. And I'm just gonna fold this in half. And I think we'll stamp something here. So I got this, I don't know if I wanna use a window, just because it's gonna bleed. Let's do the birdie again. What else do I have? What else did I carve? I did a leaf, it's not the best. Oh, I did, uh, I did some, what are they called, uh, bulrushes? I can't remember if this turned out okay or not, but let's try it. 
And I found these really difficult to carve because of these lines. You have to have really good control, but it is a great way to get better by challenging yourself to try something a little bit harder. All right, there we go. Let's see how this bleeds. Oh, that's fun too. It looks like a messy watercolor. So I'm gonna open it up to dry. And it bled right through, look. So you, I, I open it up just because I don't want the page to stick together. And I'm just gonna let that dry. And next thing you know, you're gonna have this kind of really neat looking, water, uh, like botanical looking paper where it's got so many layers on it. I mean, you can, add, you can just keep going with mixed media on this. You can put gesso on it. You can really have fun, go to town. And uh, it all starts with that, with the um, layering of, in this case, tissue paper. So I hope you enjoyed that video today. I hope it gave you some inspiration, some ideas. Again, go check out Cece Bo's, um channel and check out her videos. And if you liked today, please subscribe and come back and visit me again. Take care, everyone. Bye.